Trash Talk Episode 3. Um, we got Yankos and BB from G2. And these are these are some goaded players, some of the best in Europe. And uh, I'm, I'm really excited because, I mean, we've obviously all known each other for a really long time. And um, it's kind of my first time having, like, European players on the on the podcast, so I'm sure there, I'm sure there's going to be a lot of bangers. Um, but yeah, trying to tell me that anyone else accepted your invitation to come here? D- uh, no, I, I only you asked you guys. <laughs> I only asked you guys. I promise. All right, you're my number one picks. Um, I actually, uh, sus, eventually we're going to do perks. Eventually we're going to do perks. But yeah, so. We were just talking about Champions Cube. Do you guys, do you guys like ever watch the streams of it? Do you guys wish that you had it in Europe? I heard European solo queues like dog shit now. Um, yeah, wait, I don't know. Like, I, I think that Champions Cube is a good idea, right? Just because you get, you get everyone to try hard. And the problem with European solo queues, there's too many one tricks that play st- stuff like Sona, um, and just like punch of uses champions. So. I think if there's a champion's queue, everyone would naturally try hard. So I think the level of the region would raise, at least in solo queue. But yeah, uh, we ask, we ask Riot, or maybe we ask LAC. We ask someone, and they said, yeah, not happening for this year. So, so yeah, wow. I mean, maybe you know, maybe one day, maybe one day. Stay jealous, maybe. guys. Honestly, yeah, it's, it's mean, not as good as you, as you think. Oh god. I mean, I think it's it's nice, uh, especially for newer players, right? I think for newer players. Getting into like the communication uh, game, like because you don't have like voice chat, which I don't know why we don't have it yet as well. Um, yeah, I just think it's good. It's probably more fun as well. Yeah, it's fucking, it's super fun. But then sometimes Wait, you but get why like did you say that, Yeah, why did you say that it's not that great as you would think it is? They have like any bad experiences or? Um. Okay. Well, there's a couple of problems with it because the first one is like. You'll just sometimes have games that is completely ultra lost in champ selects because you'll have like four amateur players, like not even academy players. You'll have like four <laughs> amateur players against five LCS players, and then you just know that there's no way you're gonna win this game. Also, there's a there's like a huge queue time problem because you know there's only like 50 total people playing. So like if one day like three top laners just decide that they don't want to play that day, then the games take like 40 minutes to start because. Yeah, you're just gonna be waiting forever because there's just not enough people playing a, a certain role, and you can't play, you can't fill, like you can't off roll. So, like the queue times can just be like fucking crazy. Especially for me, I play to carry, and like there's a million eighty carries playing. So, yeah, it kind of blows. But I, I still think it would okay. be good for you guys for sure. And and there would be like more try hard players in Europe than there are in NA. Yeah, probably as well. I mean, I also think that like normally when all the LAC or LCS players are screaming, it's probably like the worst time to play, right? But then after scrims, I don't know what time does scrim end in NA. In Europe, it ends around 7, 8. So I assume around this time, everyone will just play the Champions queue. So I think that queue times wouldn't be like as bad. Even now, in solo queue, I get like 10 to 15 minutes sometimes. So I feel like it's not maybe that extreme. I mean, it's 40 minutes a, lo- a long time, right? But I just feel like in Europe, you'll have probably more than 50 active players. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Do you, do you guys think... Have you guys like read about the narratives like for American players being the laziest region and like uh, yeah Ole made like this big post about how like uh, n- none of the American pros are like taking Champions Cup seriously or like practicing hard. Do you, I, I feel like BB would know more because you actually played in NA and then you moved to Europe. Like, do you, just be honest. Do yeah. you think that do you think that American players are I mean, lazier? I mean, I think there's also lazy people in EU. Um, but I, I I agree. I think there are probably more lazy people in NA just because I think it's it's just it's just easier to be lazy in NA. I feel like not because of the server itself, but just because there's more things to do. I feel like, and it's just the weather is always nice as well, you know. Like so, people want to go outside more just naturally. But maybe like it's obviously never an excuse. Um, but I think it's really just up to the people, right? And I think it's just kind of a matter in NA. Or like it was for a long time, but I think now it's like it has gotten better. Like I've seen even a post where a lot of players are still not playing Champions Q, and they were like also the ones yeah. saying, "Oh, we need a we need an extra server, right?" And I've seen people having like zero games as well, which is, in my opinion, I think that's kind of crazy, you know. Um, but yeah, what, what's your guys' practice schedule like? I'll tell you what the NA one is after. What's your guys' practice schedule like though? 
Um, I mean, when it comes to just scrims, I suppose we have a meeting around 12.30, then we eat food, then we play a soccer game, then we play scrims between 1 p.m., no, sorry, 2 p.m. to 7 p.m., and then that's kind of it. Sometimes we have night blocks, um, but it didn't really happen much during the regular season. But yeah, I, would, I would say that that's kind of our schedule, right? And technically, before and after is free time, but normally you just play solo queue or you just wake up late, depends on the player. Jesus. That is fucking insane. Like, because... The schedule doesn't change at all for between like NA and EU. I would say like the amount of required time, it's like the same thing, but shifted back two hours in NA. You just, you just play, um, or you have a meeting at like 11, you scrim from 12 to five, five scrims. And then afterwards is like your free time. But like, I think the culture is the, the what happens after scrims is probably like the biggest difference. Yankos, yeah, did, you, did you know that you streamed 988 hours last year? Yeah. Well, I didn't go to worlds, right? So, and um, or MSI, I, I was kind of like uh, cosplaying uh, double lift. So I didn't actually qualify anywhere and uh, oh, I, I was okay. doing very well. So um, it makes sense that I streamed more. I feel like I don't actually stream that insane amount during the season. So I stream three times a week, three hours each. So that's nine hours. And then on Sunday is my free day. So I stream like six hours. So that would be like 12 hours a week. But I think my numbers ramp up. Um, after the season so like november december if i don't go for vacation if i don't go to worlds i have obviously way more extra time so then i stream more but that's all spent playing solo key as well right so i do play a lot i guess so even though i'm getting older <laughs> quite fast actually oh, uh, i still play a lot to like keep being relevant yeah that's fucking crazy i mean do you like it do you enjoy streaming do you enjoy playing solo key still uh, I mean, I think I enjoy streaming a lot. I, do I enjoy playing solo queue? It depends on the game, right? If I get a Sona one trick support, maybe not. If I get now Tidus, maybe I do. So I think it's just uh, biased towards the drafts a lot and biased towards if I'm doing well or not. But overall, I'm having fun still and the game is changing, right? So it keeps things fresh. And I feel like my role is one of these roles that allow you to have fun. I feel like as a jungler in solo queue, you can always do something that is fun. If you are playing AD carry, let's say, and you get dived every game, you probably hate your life. Yes. But if you are playing jungle role, you can actually be the one diving the AD carry, or you can be the one just farming for late game and just not caring about all the lanes and muting everyone with Kane or something. So I feel like jungle is probably the least stressful role, I would say, in solo queue. So you can kind of just chill. So I think that also helps me to not maybe get burned out as fast or maybe still actually like the game and not hate the game. Um, but I do have my moments where I would just prefer to play Fortnite. Even though I never play Fortnite, but it would be nice to, you know, get paid it's and still better. play a kid's game. <laughs> yeah. yeah. BB, you used to stream a shit ton and now you stream. So it's, I, I have the stats. You streamed 300 hours in 2018, 250 hours 2019, 250 hours 2020. And then this last year you streamed 80 hours. So what's up with that? Where's the yeah. streams, bro? Um, I mean, I used to like streaming a lot. Uh, I don't know why, actually. I actually, I was thinking that this year I was going to stream more. Uh, and I did stream a bit, uh, not too much, but I don't know. I just found it like less fun, maybe. I don't know why. There is no particular reason. I think also it didn't really fit into my schedule. And also I was like, a lot of the time I just was like, I would rather just chill and like listen to like really loud music and just play solo queue all day. But uh, yeah, I mean, I don't know if I will ever be streaming as much as Jankos or as much as like other streamers, right? But uh, it's certainly something that I will consider at some point again, for sure. No, yeah, I'm, I'm just wondering. I mean, it's it's honestly so stressful streaming solo queue because every time you you make a mistake, there's 500 <laughs> challenger fucking Twitch chatters who are telling you what you did wrong, and it's like I fucking hate my life. Like this is cancer. Okay, but do you ever have this happen where you are not streaming solo queue, and when you used to be a pro player, and you would when you die, you actually just don't care. You know, I had this yeah. happen to me where I try to get my int out off stream. So when I'm not streaming and I'm playing solo queue, not every game, right? Like when I'm warming up for scrims, it's different. But let's say I'm playing on like my free day and I'm just playing solo queue off stream. Then I feel like I'm bond to like in some games and I feel like really good <laughs> because no one is judging me. Yeah, no, no that's true. Like... That's true. That's true. Like, yeah, get the shitty games out. That's true. I mean, like, you're also way more likely to experiment when you're not streaming because like, if you're limit testing on like new champs that you're not that good at and you're streaming, everyone's gonna blame you. But like if you're off stream, you can do whatever the fuck you want. No one's there to judge. So that feels good. True. Do, do you guys think that there's a really big difference between um, NA solo queue and EU solo queue now? 
I mean, re- removing champion skew, but like, I'm sure I'm sure you played a little bit of any silicon and BB. You played like a ton of it, obviously, and then switched. Is there a big difference? Uh, uh, maybe I will actually start because I have nothing yeah. to say. Um, so my answer will be short. I played like a couple of games only during. I don't actually remember when, and I don't remember why. I just remember not playing at all because I just felt like people are not good. I don't know if it's true. Could be completely false. It's true. I just didn't have enough time to play. I think it was during Rift Rivals. And ever since, I didn't actually play any solo queue. So it was such a long time ago, like 2019. So I feel like it's my, my opinion will be pointless. So, uh, BB. Yeah. I mean, I, I think, uh, like, it, especially when I first, like, my first year in NA was really, really bad in solo queue. Like, uh, there's been times where I, like, there was legit a whole day where I didn't play against a guy with TP on top lane. And <laughs> nowadays it's, like, more fine because TP is, like, kind of bad now compared to like ignite and solo right but like before i couldn't just never get really good practice and they would just i would just see trindamir darius timo every single game uh, like every day uh, and in eu it wasn't like that and in eu i obviously had better ping and stuff which is now kind of fixed in any right because there's like champion skill and stuff so i mean i'm assuming if i was to play ever again there then champion skill would, would probably save my sanity um because I, there was just some days where I just didn't want to play. Like, you want to play because you want to, like, improve, right? <laughs> but then you just have to play against, like, Darius, and then he just ghosts on you, and you're just dead level 3, you know? <laughs> like, I don't, I don't I just don't want to play for the whole day. Uh, but in EU, there's been some more one tricks, that's for sure, but it's definitely still, like, it's still fine. And it's, the thing is that people always kind of, they just play better, I feel like. Uh, yeah. I mean, I can't compare nowadays because I don't play in NA anymore, right? But yeah. I actually like want to compare it in a way to maybe Korean solo queue because I cannot talk about NA solo queue, but in Korea, there's still a lot of one tricks, there's a lot of players, but there's a lot of good players. So when you actually play solo queue, it feels like everyone's trying and it feels like even though, yeah, sure, some games you play against like a guy playing Talon Jungle and you would normally not play against in competitive, then still it actually feels like the guy is good at the game, everyone else is good at the game, so the practice makes sense. So I assume that in Europe is like worse than Korea, and then NA would be maybe even worse than Europe. So that just makes it. Oh yeah, uh, it's it's bad. really bad. It's also like a. It also got like really snowballed because some people thought it was bad. So then they just decided that instead of playing solo queue, they're just gonna play like one v ones. Like I remember BB used to play like a shit ton of one v ones to prepare for a match, and. And then, like, you know, more and more people are pl- not playing solo queue because those first good players, like, stopped and they're not motivated, like you said, because, like, I don't know, they're playing against, like, Draven one tricks, Teemo one tricks, whatever it is. And then it just it just snowballed. Like, there was just less and less good players. And then that incentivizes, like, more people to stop playing. And it just got really, really bad. And it was, like, impossible to fix. So, um, yeah, we just like, got imports, we no? Yeah, I mean, we just got imports. Less and less. The, good players uh, just get more imports but but like the imports come here and the first thing that everyone interviews them about is na solo queue and they always say like i can't play it like i refuse to play it. like hans came here and he just said this is terrible i'm not playing this and then like berserker came here and he, it's, it's terrible i'm not playing this shit it's so bad so it's it, it happens to everybody actually but um yeah i i think we're just really lucky that we got a fix and then hopefully you guys. I heard like Perks was saying that like this is like the worst that EU solo queue has ever been or something like that this year. I thought that was funny. I mean, actually, I don't know if that's true. Maybe it is, but also I feel like um, he came from an A, and maybe he had like too high expectations of European solo queue. If that makes sense. Maybe when he was playing in an A, he felt like European solo queue was so much better. But then when he came back, he actually realized that it's not that much different. So maybe that's why he said what he said. But maybe it's actually true. I'm not sure. I just feel like it's always, it was always kind of bad. I actually felt like it was worse during Worlds last year. I felt like there's just so many Sona one tricks back then, and Showmaker had like a lot of fair points about how stupid is European solo queue back then. Like yeah. just so many one tricks because more troll people played because a lot of people came to uh, Worlds to Iceland, right? Yeah. And then sure we had like some decent players from Worlds, but we also had a lot of like players fanboys that wanted to really play with the good players and then that also made the games more shit in a sense so um i actually I think now that. it's like yeah it's okay you know it's 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 like it, you will get tilted a bit but you can actually get through your day of solo queue like you know six seven games damn the positive attitude let's go that's fucking hilarious yo jacos did you know that um in 2016 tsm actually wanted you to play for them 
Like they, they, yeah. they wanted you. Oh, you, you did know that. And like, if it was up to you back then, would you have joined? Uh, I'm not sure. I mean, it depends, right? I mean, after like, wait, you're in TSM, right? Now? Or no? No, 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 no. I'm, oh, you're not? I'm completely so. I mean, yeah. I just like heard that a, a lot of stuff about like Reginald. Lately, I mean. So I, <laughs> I don't know about joining them. Like in hindsight of everything that happened. Back then, maybe I would have, like, I, it's hard to say. The thing is that I also heard that I had really good offers between 2014 to 15, but I was a rookie and I was really scared of not playing in the LAC because I kind of dropped school to play in professional league. So then when the season ended and me and my team didn't really qualify for Worlds, like we placed top four back then in summer split, I felt like I really need to secure a contract fast because what if no one hires me? And mm -hmm. the contract I signed was like not good. And it also, even though back then I was, you know, pretty decent, then it, I, I didn't really talk to any teams or I was just like a little bit contract jailed, if that makes sense. So yeah. I signed very early with Rocket in 2015 and I'm sure I could have found like a better team back then uh, if I tried. And then 16 was the same, but I feel like 15 to 16 was still a big improvement because actually, um, yeah, I mean, we went towards that year, right? And we actually went to semis and it was still a good year. I think 17 was way worse, but 16 was still decent. So I'm not sure if I have joined TSM or not. I felt like joining an A back then especially would be uh, putting like a knife in my own heart in a sense. I'm, I'm not sure if I'm using the right expression, but I'm trying to say that. I mean, I would you would have fucked yourself maybe... up. Yeah, Your career yeah, was insane afterwards. Say, yeah. Like actually so, you would have rewrote history because like you became like one of the most accomplished Western players ever. And then if you joined NA, you would have probably just sat in group stage with me or maybe i would make na great maybe you maybe <laughs> maybe so who knows right who knows my god i, I can only hope dude baby do you do you ever miss playing in lcs do you ever miss parts of la or yeah i think yeah what i missed most was uh, like to play as a play with right? i think we we especially like our roster we had a really good time i feel like and then uh yeah, I mean, that's what I miss the most. I don't really miss the league itself. I think it's just the people mostly. Like, I also miss, like, like parts and stuff. Um, and, like, uh, like even, like, all, all, like most of my teammates, I've, I would say, I, I still, uh, I would like to, to talk with them and, like, hang out with them and stuff. Yeah, they're really good times. Dude, all there. of your former teammates what? miss you too, actually. What? Those are really good times. What? Like... Yo, I mean, Yeah, I guess, how come you're treating my boy like shit? But... He misses us. That means you guys treat him bad. Are you guys like no, not actually, having a good like, time? No, we're I having a good time. Yeah, I, well. I think we are having a good time as well. But the thing is, you cannot compare chill life in America to stressful yeah. life in Europe. It, no, it is can. what it is, you know. Yeah. So no, I just. Feel I mean, to be fair, it gets really stressful when Yankos keeps on farting, you know. So what? These in accusations the are something that I never heard of before, and I'm surprised equally as you are. Like, it's you like guys a machine over there. Machine getting our jump or our top laner. What the fuck. <laughs> I mean, usually it's our AD carry that, he, that he's one-shotting, but... <laughs> what the fuck? Okay, yeah, you're a little bit weird. Know. Jesus Christ. Yeah. Um, let's see. What was I going to ask BB about? I was going to... Oh, I was going to ask BB about... In Turkey, you played on a roster with Closer, Abadage, Freeze, and Dumble Doge, oh. which is actually stacked yeah. as fuck if you think about it. And also, two of your teammates ended up coming to NA, so... What do you think about that? Do you think that you like encourage them to come? You paved um, the way. I I don't know. Like when I talked to like closer, I think I had one interview at some point that he said that uh, that I did show that the Turkish player right back then people were not really thinking highly of the Turkish league. But uh, when I first made the step, people were obviously like really motivated and stuff. So I think I did kind of pave the way. Um, I don't think they or like, oh my god, uh, I have to be exactly like him or something, but like, it, that it is possible, right? And obviously I'm really happy because they're also all really close friends of mine. Uh, I still talk to every single one of them from time to time, right? So I'm very, very happy that everyone, besides Dumbledore now, I, I think he, he retired, right? Um, that they are doing stuff still and they're doing some something that is uh, very competitive as well. Um, and they're doing good, right? Like Abe and the uh, closer, they they won uh, yeah, they a championship good. as well, which uh, I was very happy about. So, uh, yeah. But about, definitely back then, I don't think we were as good as we are right now, right? But uh, obviously, I I did really like that roster. Like I remember 
back in the day when Freeze joined, I was very, very impressed with how much he knew about the game and stuff. And I think I learned a lot about um, uh, what he was just saying. Um, and I think that now he's he's in a coaching position, I think. Yeah, yeah, he's coaching which, in which, NA. You literally brought all makes, your homies here. Yeah. <laughs> which makes a lot of sense to me, in my opinion. I think he, he, would, he would do good uh, as a coach. Actually, I have a funny story. Hit I me think with Steam, it. I, th I think they will appreciate it, your viewers. So, you know, when Freeze was playing in my team, like in 2017, H2K, I remember that his brother visited the gaming house and his brother was like kind of, I, th I think he was living in the gaming house along like us for like a couple of days because he was vi visiting Freeze. And I remember that our manager came and like one of our kind of like co-owners came and they came from America and they would make good burgers, you know, because they were American and it made sense. Of course. So they would make us burgers. But the thing is okay. that I was outside, so I didn't get to like try the burgers because Freeze's brother ate like all the burgers. So I got really tilted. <laughs> Holy like shit. I didn't actually get to like try the burgers because by the time I came back, they were just they just disappeared. And then I asked like what happened, and then I heard Freeze's brother ate all. You got fucked, that's, dude. That's what I heard. Your team <laughs> yeah, is, they need to be more considerate. What the hell? They gotta save one. It's crazy, exactly. right? Like it never happened to me before. When all the burgers were disappeared, I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> How about you? You can come vacation in NA. I mean, you guys aren't gonna make worlds anyway, so we can you can come over. We can have some burgers together. True, they might invite me to the um, analyst desk, right? Of course, man. Because there's no way we are making it as a team. So, no, you guys are. Yeah, I actually looked at the standings. You guys are fourth place. Do you do you guys think? Like, how do you feel about it? Fourth place is obviously not good, but do you feel good? Well, optimistic. The last time I was fourth place in the uh, upper bracket. Actually, not the last time. In NA, at least we won championship. <laughs> and Obvious. you know that as it's well. It's cursed. Or, sorry, it's blessed. It's good luck. It's not cursed. It's, it's not yeah, cursed. Yeah, I mean, it could be better, right? But I think it's fine. Like, honestly, it doesn't matter. I mean, okay, so it doesn't matter. It, it's like very copium, right? Of course, because <laughs> you don't want to accept that the fact that you are garbage. But at the same time, in playoffs, as long as you're in upper bracket, it actually doesn't matter which seed are you, unless you, like you get the side selection for only the first game, and then whoever loses gets the side selection. I'm not sure if these are the rules in NA right now, but it used to be one three five for the team that um, chose that had the higher seed. But now it's you get yeah, to choose for the first you, game you get to and choose. then it's the losing game. It's definitely better now to be higher seed than before, but I agree, it doesn't really matter. But yeah, but basically it's like it's whatever you know. It's kind of whatever I think. So. As long as we are good in playoffs, we are going to win. And if we are not, then we are shit. And it doesn't matter if we are fourth in regular season or first. If we are shit, we are still shit. Last year, we were shit. And we mm -hmm. were first, I think, or second regular season in Spring Split. And then we were like quite high in summer. And then we just lost every BO5 except Schalke, which were completely, well, not that great. But we played there, so <laughs> they were not that bad either. <laughs> so, so I'm just saying, you know, like if you are bad, you will you will lose. If you are good, you will win. It's It's kind of like a... Yeah, forehead kind of thing, but it's it's true, you know, it's just true. So either we get better and we win, or we don't, and we, we are just shit anyway. Yeah, I mean, in NA especially, it's it's pretty common that like the first seed never wins LCS. It's just like a curse. Like the first seed always has a crazy win loss in regular season, and then they choke playoffs. So I don't like Rogue, I don't actually. think it matters that much. We have that as well, kind of. Rogue is always first as well, but they never really do that great in playoffs. I mean, they they don't do bad actually. I think they are pretty good this year, but. They never won. So who's the best team in LEC right now? G2 Esports. <laughs> okay, okay. Oh. Who's actually... Okay, okay. Other than you guys, who's the best? And what makes them good? Because I feel like a lot of the viewers here, they don't actually... They don't follow LEC, so it's just kind of interesting. Because for us, we have um, TL and C9. They're the only two good teams, and it's pretty easy to tell what makes them good. But like, what about in Europe? Who's, who's the best? Maybe like top two, top three teams. I mean, I think we have like pretty decent teams overall. I think that like probably it would be Rogue, um, Fnatic. I think mm -hmm. these are top two, probably excluding us. Vitality was like hard choking throughout the whole. Um, not maybe choking, but they just didn't do so well. And if, even though they had a super team, like super players, they didn't do so well, right? So they are not considered good currently. Um, Excel and Misfits are kind of meh. Misfits actually plays top three. But I think it's fake info, and a lot of the games were won because enemy team was hard trolling, like G2, for example. I'm not sure if you are aware, but we had a game against them where we were like... Oh, I saw 12, 12 gold ahead. Yeah. Okay, yeah. So, yeah. yeah. So, I just think that them being top three is fake. 
Why is Rogan and, and Fanatic good? I mean, Fanatic has just like great, good, really good players overall, and they play around both lane quite well, and this is like mostly their wing condition. But I also feel like their shot calling improved a lot with like addition of Humanoid. So I think that overall, you know, they, they, they are just a good team. Um, and for Rogue, it's kind of the same. They play very well as a team. I don't think Rogue has like insane like individual players, but they are still like on pair with everyone else. Mm -hmm. uh, but they really, really play well as a team, you know, and their jungle actually smurfs his ganks often like he gives up his camps to help laners and that works for them very well it's something that didn't happen to rogue before because they played with inspired who would only farm 24 7 and now they actually have a jungler <laughs> that helps lanes so now they play completely different style than they used to like you know the last year let's say uh, yeah. and that works for them more yeah wait so yeah. why why is um why is vitality shit if if, if they have a super team Okay, can I, uh, like, uh, I think they're, like, the complete opposite of, like, Rogue. Because I think Rogue is, like, sure, there's maybe not one guy that is outstanding, but they never, like, really into the game. They always play, like, together. But I feel like Vitality has just a lot of inters, you know. Even though they are, like, mechanically maybe better, but I feel like they're just inting a lot, if that makes sense, you know. Um, oh, wow. And not even like I don't know. There's there's just many times where someone is just not having a great game, and then they lose the game of that. I feel like, um, whereas Rogue just plays always very stable, very good, and they have a clear plan, and the jungle just ganks right. Um, mm. So it's easier for them to win games. I feel like than Vitality. But I think Vitality is like uh, I think when we scrimped them at least um, in the beginning of the split, they were for sure the best team that we scrimped at that time. Um, so I think they could have they could have been in uh, a way where a way way better position than they are right now. I think. What do you think about Afari? When he was in NA, everyone was calling him a lane only, like stats only player who had no game impact. And then, like basically, the narrative was like he stomps his lane and then he's useless afterwards. So what do you think about him now that you're playing against him in EU? Um, the thing is that I think people are most of the time looking to make him look bad. And in, in, in a way, right? Just because to find the reasoning of why they're losing. Uh, I, th I do think he's very, very good at laning. Uh, don't get me wrong. Like, he's, he's for sure good at laning. Um, can he help his more uh, team more? I think so, yeah. I think he, sometimes he does uh, play a lot for himself, like selfish. And I think uh, he can probably play more for his for his team. But that's, that's just a style, I think, as a player, right? If that's... Uh, like you can see it both as a as a good trait or as a flaw, right, in a player. And I think um, he's he's for sure one of the, if not the greatest laner at least in in uh, in the league. And uh, I'm guessing he was that in NA as well. But, I mean, but for sure, I, I I like to play against him. It's very challenging always. It's very good. Um, so I'm not sure. You know, like you can for sure argue that <laughs> he plays for himself too much. But like he doesn't really get his leads from jungle most of the time you know like the thing is if the jungle helps him a lot, uh, then he knows how to like grow the leads kind of um and i think he's also very good at communicating it like the way he wants help i guess mm -hmm. so um like uh, you you play with me right you also know that i like to communicate a lot and bring yeah. my teammates to my side a lot and i think he's very similar to that um and I don't know how his communication style is later in the game, but he may just be more selfish than like I don't know other top laners, right? But um, I don't, I, I can't say for sure because obviously I, I did never played with him in the team. Um, but he's for sure, I think, a very good top laner. Yeah, 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 that makes sense. It's just crazy to think a team with Alfari and Perks would like not be in the top two or top three teams in LEC. It's just. Like, you just imagine those guys are, like, always going to be at the top. I guess not Alfari, because Alfari was, like, literally on a 10th place team before he came to NA. But um, definitely, like, Percy and Karzi. It just feels like those guys are, like, supposed to be the best. But uh, maybe not. Maybe not. Is it really hard for you, Yankos, to play with a completely new top lane and bot lane? Like... Uh, no, I think it's fine. It's quite refreshing, actually. I think last year we had, like, a star team in a way, right? Um, but it didn't work out, and I think this year we tried a different approach with having like a mediocre top laner and a very good bot lane. <laughs> Holy! <laughs> so, <laughs> he just loves doing that. <laughs> so, so, so I so think toxic, that, dude. Um, overall, I'm I'm actually quite happy. I think we made a lot of progress throughout the split. 
and I'm very, very hopeful for playoffs. Hopeful as if I'm fucking confident that we are going to actually fuck shit up. So I'm looking forward to Fnatic. Um, and I do think that, uh, I mean, if you are a good team, you are just like a good team. And Mad Lions proved it to last year in Europe where, again, no one considered them being insane, but then they actually won two splits and they were the best team in Europe, right? Um, and I feel like sometimes getting five players that have big names is not necessarily the recipe for success. And currently we are seeing it with Vitality where they have five players that are actually really considered like the best, or if not like at least top two or top three in their roles. Maybe with the exception of Labrov, who was a little bit less known, but it's only less known for people that are clueless. Labrov was actually really, really good as a support uh, mm -hmm. throughout the whole last year. And for sure, people would put him maybe tier below, you know, Miki or Hillisang, but still put him quite highly and ha would have high opinion of him. So I feel like, you know, the game is all about team and how you really work as a team and how you play as a team will come out on top. Um, so even if you have five individual stars and you don't really play well as a team, then obviously you're not going to win. It's not that kind of game as it used to be in 2013 or 12 or 11, where, you know, one guy just won me nines. It's just not that kind of a game, League of Legends anymore. Who's the most ego player you've ever played with? I actually don't know. I don't think I had, I don't think I had like that many ego players in a way. I mean, I think like the most difficult I have ever worked with would be Forgiven because he would be like, he would be very emotional. To me, he kind of had two personalities in a way where he would be very friendly towards you outside of the game, but like not very friendly inside of the game. And it would not <laughs> matter about whatever what he's saying makes sense or not. He, he would just say things because let's say he would be emotional. So I feel like Forgiven would be probably like the hardest to work with, but I wouldn't, I, I'm not sure if that's because of ego, you know, like ego is such a, broad way of looking at a person when it comes to league in my opinion so it's very difficult for me to answer you know it's, it's easier basically to answer like which player would be the hardest to work with but not which player had the highest ego mm -hmm. interesting i i have this random reddit comment saved about in 2016 you guys played together on h2k um and Vander said after you guys kicked Forgiven that he'd leave H2K if they got Forgiven back. So obviously yeah, their relationship was I mean, you know, I had this conversation. Terrible. I had this conversation with my owner. Literally when they wanted him back, I was sitting on the couch talking to my owner who was sitting in New York in his house. And he was trying to explain to me why it's a good idea to bring him back. And I was trying to explain to him why I don't want to play anymore. <laughs> so yeah, I had this conversation. You know? I had this conversation. It happened. Jesus Christ. What about you, Vivi? Did but, you, you know, ever back have a... then, like, to be honest, to be completely honest with you, back then, I was also not a perfect player. I mean, yeah. it's not like I'm now, but Vivi could probably say that, but I, I, see, <laughs> you, don't, you don't have to, you don't have to. So anyway, um, I don't think I was, like, a very well-behaved player back then, and I was actually quite toxic myself. Um, I think it comes from my roots. In 2014, when I was playing, like, the full Polish lineup, I feel like I was the rookie and I was the youngest, and I was maybe not, I wouldn't say I was getting bullied, but... I felt like being toxic was okay because of what, how my team behaved back then um, towards each other. Mm -hmm. So in 2015, I was like a bit toxic myself. And 2016, I was quite, I mean, I just couldn't work with Forgiven really. Um, but it was also like, I would not be very well behaved as well. And I think in 2017, I would be like a 50-50. And in 2018, I started improving my behavior a lot. Um, and then hopefully now I'm actually a human being, you know, when I'm 26, which makes sense. But yeah, I, I don't think I was like the, the best teammate like in uh, through, throughout the whole uh, the early years of my career, if that makes sense. Yeah, I don't think anyone. Was. I wouldn't. It's, it's, I wouldn't. So I wouldn't consider myself like insane, you know. But I, I would say that just from like a pure improve and non-emotional and try to be better perspective, then for, for sure, for game was like not that easy to work with. Mm -hmm. Bibi, did you did you ever play with like someone who's just like the worst fucking teammate ever? Um, I mean, I don't know if you can call it the worst fucking teammate ever, but uh, I mean, I did have team teammates that were harder to work with. Uh, I mean, one obvious one is Stardog. I feel like that's like the obvious <laughs> I one. I totally forgot about that. Holy shit! Um, yeah, I mean, I think he was just very different from like all the other players. Like just the way he reacted to things. Um, I mean, I still think he improved. Like, he improved uh, a lot on, like, his behavior. 
but it was just still wasn't enough, you know. But uh, the the thing, like I I didn't I didn't uh, dislike him because I, he did want to win, you know. Um, like he was constantly talking about the game actually, which like even the team dinners, even even like uh, outside of scrims, before scrims, he was always he was very creative actually with his jungle picks as well. He wanted to play like Ezreal jungle and stuff. Oh, very um, creative. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I like creativity uh, because I also play a lot of random stuff. Um, mm -hmm. So I definitely encourage uh, this kind of behavior, uh, but uh, definitely like negative behavior. I just dislike. Obviously, everybody can be negative from time to time, right? Like uh, sometimes Yankos can whip out the, you know. But uh, yeah, I think everyone tries, and but Dardock was was definitely I think one of the hardest to work with. If Dude. I had to call. Someone. I remember a someone. fucking story Parth told me of like you guys are playing playoffs with Dardock and then he's like asking everyone how they feel and he's he told me that like you said something like you know even if we lose it's not that bad because at least Dardock gets at least Dardock loses too like like that's how bad <laughs> his relationship was with his teammates. I'm that's not actually sure. fucked up, but it's pretty funny. <laughs> Do you guys think yeah. um? Like, one of the things that, like, Dardock fanboys always say is, like, oh, he's just really toxic, but, like, it's because NA's so soft. If he went to EU, he would actually do well. And then people were talking about how, like, Dardock might be the first American player to get imported to EU. Like, do you think he'd do well? Uh, no. no. I think the issues that he has, he will, it will still remain, you know? And, but the thing in the EU is, like, okay, the thing is, the difference in EU, people actually talk back, you know? So, if he's in a team... I wouldn't be surprised if at some point there's a fist fight, you know, like, like Holy for real shit. now, you know, um, because I don't know if there was ever a fist fight in the team. Probably there was, no. you know, like they we have been, we have been ten years in esports, you know. Probably there was probably one like that we don't know about, you know. Oh, but, oh yeah, uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's. Uh, I think it's just uh, no matter NA, you even if it was uh, any other league, it, it there would be issues, right? If there's an issue with how you behave and stuff, um, that there will always be issues. Yeah, uh, that's that's totally true, and I agree. I don't think Dardock would do very well. I uh, I'm getting a random memory of like in 2016, um, I was in the bathroom at Worlds, and Forgiven walked into the bathroom with Prawley, and they were just screaming at each other. Like I don't think they knew that I was taking a shit, because otherwise they probably wouldn't be like fucking yelling so loud. But I'm just in the bathroom and they're just going at it. They're screaming at each other. They're calling each other names. Like, I just remember that was like one of the first times where I witnessed like EU toxicity, I guess. Or, but it was specifically forgiven. It was honestly just one person. So it's like bad to generalize EU. But like, that shit was so wild to me because um, obviously, like, I've been really toxic in the past. But I've like, I've never like just straight full on screamed at someone. That shit is like, that was crazy. And obviously, Yankos, you're on that team. So you guys are probably fucking exploding. <laughs> Wait, you guys actually made semis that year. What the fuck? You guys were doing really yeah. well. I mean, I was really surprised how well we done considering what was going on with the team. As I said, I was also not like a very good teammate back then. And like Forgiven was of, of course like, I mean, we really didn't like want to continue with Forgiven Summer, but then Breeze had problem with wrist and he was just not playing very well at all. Like he was actually, like it was, it was clear that we are a better team with Forgiven, right? Mm -hmm. But that's probably because Breeze couldn't play because of his wrist. Mm -hmm. um and there was just no ad carries back then like the thing is that these were the times where you would sacrifice like dignity to play with someone who you didn't want to play with just because everyone else was bad but yeah. nowadays it's way different you know like with time there's so many good players that right now i don't think we could have another forgiven scenario where a player can be so difficult but also still be in a team i think right now we just get kicked actually instantly so yeah uh yeah i mean it happened before you know like didn't I mean, this is just like a random example. I also don't want to hate him for him, but then he joined Schalke and then he got like kicked after two or four games or something. Like, yeah, he tried yeah. to come back, right? And then he just like Insta like just didn't come back as well. Like I, two years ago or a year ago, I don't remember. So I, I think it's just different times. Yeah. Now those yeah, are I mean, different times. This would happen where, I mean, no, I, I don't know what was happening behind the scenes when it comes to like probably and Porgy and talking in the bathrooms, but it would happen that Porgy had to talk to probably one-on-one, right? And whatever happened between them happened between them, I suppose. Yeah, I kind of want to ask you guys about um, all of the different years where something important happened. So we just talked about 2016 where you got 
top four in the world semis with h2k which is pretty crazy then you went to worlds in 2018 and you're, you had the gt roster of wonder perks yarn and wadid and i mean there were still grabs he was your coach so tell me about that really fast or like not it doesn't have to be really fast but just like do you have any like feelings oh, about that one talk about like the 2018 or what yeah your 2018 run oh you um, made top yeah four. i mean i think we had like i think springs was quite good actually we went to finals but we got like outperformed by fanatic a lot and then in summer we just couldn't find our footing and we actually just like got eliminated from playoffs instantly and i th at that time we also went like 0 20 in scrims i think or 0 25 maybe i just i just remember that we were not able to win a scream it was like a mental block like it was just not possible to win even when we would be ahead it was actually just not possible to win a scream it was so bad that we had like carlos even came to a gaming house and he was trying to do like an emergency meeting when he was trying to like motivate us or something and then we lost players to misfits 3-0 and then we went on a break and then we made worse the gauntlet because after the break it felt like everyone was refreshed mentally and we actually made it to worlds which was very nice um i think a lot of credit would have to go to Ferex for like that that whole uh gauntlet thingy um and then uh well you know we went to worlds we got a little bit lucky group as some people may call it but we did beat rng 3-2 in the quarters and then we lost to semis to ig the, the world champions that year so i think it was actually a very fun year uh it was also to me, the first time I tasted Worlds was 2016, and 2017 was the worst year of my life. It was actually worse than 2015, because I didn't make it to Worlds, and I already had the glimpse of how it feels like to compete against the best players. And also, I'm not sure how much you enjoy these times when you used to be a pro, but I really like the part about the Korean bootcamp where you go and you play solo queue there, and you play against the best player scrims. Well, maybe not, because they wouldn't scream you always, right? But you'd play against like better players than normally, and you would be in a different environment and, you know, they would pay for your food and pay for a really good hotel. And all you had to do is just play solo queue. So that was like a different life for me in a way, these boot camps. So I really enjoy them. And then, mm -hmm. you know, Worlds, of course, another dimension when it comes to playing competitively. Maybe now it's a bit worse because no people um, since COVID. But yeah, overall, I think that was a really, really nice year of my life, 2018. Definitely a lot of fun. You know, 2016 was also good considering Worlds, but... 2018, I actually liked my team, and 2016, I also liked my team, but it was also like some some toxicity from Forgiven, right? But in 2018, I didn't feel like there was like that much toxicity. It was just uh, like we actually had a lot of fun by then, so it was definitely nice. Yeah, and um, yeah, you guys fucking ended up with top four worlds, which is pretty crazy considering you went 0 24. Also, the part where you talking about. Um, Korean boot camps being good. I feel like for NA teams, it's like the worst part of the year because we'll like come over. Everyone's really pumped. Everyone has a lot of, you know, excitement. And and usually it starts off good, but at some point, like the team just collapses. And I mean, we had that, ex I had that experience with BB in 2020. It was just like legitimately like <laughs> yeah. so fucked. Like every day yeah, just feels doomed. Well, yeah. It's it's rough. Actually, yeah. It's rough. But um, I remember those. <laughs> we can't win a fucking scrim. It's a yeah. disaster. Oh god! Actually, I think in Europe it was the opposite. I mean, for us at least. Most often when we go to Worlds, we don't do so well at the beginning. But as the Worlds progress, we ramp up, and actually it feels like it's winnable. So I yeah. actually like Worlds a lot. I mean, like not even Worlds, but the bootcamp part. I really have so much fun playing the solo queue, but also um, playing scrims and actually improving. But of course, most of the time you get fucked, and then it does feel a bit hopeless, you know? Because when you are playing in your own major region, mm -hmm. even if you lose to good teams, technically, uh, you can still book someone like SK Gaming and get some wins to like have a confidence boost, <laughs> but you cannot do that during Worlds because there's no bad teams. So whoever you book, you might just still get, you know, mentally drained after a day of scrims. Yeah, yeah. So season eight, BB, you're playing in the Turkish league. Your teammates are Closer, Abadaga, Freeze, and Dumble Doge, and you guys somehow only get second place. I have no idea how the fuck with that roster you guys didn't win, but. Um, what was that you like oh, for the, you? I think, um, I mean, the, the the whole year was really insane. I feel like that was like the year where I became, I feel like, not the, necessarily a good player, but like that's where I learned how to play League of Legends. I would say, like, uh, wait, you did? So what happened after that? <laughs> right now it's like, that. okay, let, let me first finish the story and then you can make jokes. Um, so basically, I think before that even, I think I played with Malrang as well, who's, uh. Um, who's playing at Rogue, right? And I played with Septed as well. So I did have, like, the first time I ever had, like, 
uh, imports, I guess. Mm -hmm. And the, the environment was like really, really different because they couldn't speak English that well, but they were like really, really insane players. So I was like, holy shit, you know, like I want to be as good as them. So that was like a really good motivation back then. And um, playing with uh, like Abedaga closer, uh, close, that was closest rookie year as well. Um, uh, where we, I think we, I got second place two times in a row. Uh, that was because Supermassive back then was just <laughs> always stronger. Uh, uh, because they they were just, uh, they had like the best Turkish players in the league. Plus they had like really good imports always. Um, so they would always be at the top of the table, kind of. And they just smashed us 3-1 both, uh, both finals. Which kind of sucked for me there. Because I felt like I was, I should have won, you know. At least one of them. Um, mm. But then, yeah, then I got like... The offer rights from TSM. Actually, when when I got the offer from TSM, I was like, they had Honster back then, right? And I was like, yeah. there's just like no way they actually want me for main roster rights. And back then, I was talking to other teams already, like uh, in EU, um, which were not that promising. I, I if I remember correctly, it was like I did talk to uh, Misfits and Origin back then, but I wasn't their first choice. I think they took Soas and uh, Alfari back then, right? Which obviously makes sense if you think about uh, uh, that year, right? Um, yeah. Also, back then the Turkish league like literally wasn't even really considered like real. It was like considered like a yeah. minor region for players. Yeah. So I think TSM then after were like, hey, we're actually looking for like they first wanted to split time, mm -hmm. uh, but then I didn't want to split time because I felt like hey, I'm I'm just too good, you know. <laughs> like I want to play the whole yeah, time. You yeah. Know? Yeah. Yeah. Um, but then eventually we ended up uh, on a three-year deal right, with TSM where I played. Uh, and it was feeling really, really great because I've been playing with good teammates, um, especially bureaucrats uh, mm -hmm. in the first year. Um, but everyone was really, like, there was so much to learn, I feel like, and there was, like, the whole infrastructure was, like, really different. So there was, like, like the year before, I felt like it was a good year. But the year, the first year TSM was, like, okay, now, now it's getting, like, really serious, you know? And I have to perform and stuff. And I felt like the first split, especially, I was like really performing out of my mind. I feel like I was like solo killing. Like I feel like actually the first two games, I think I solo killed someday and then Huni, yeah. right? Like you, you have to imagine like you're a Turkish guy just comes from the Turkish region, right? No, you're and insane. And just uh, yeah, solo kills people. And uh, I, I remember as well. I think you guys were you were, were TL back then. Yeah. And you guys were like. Uh, had zero losers, and then I just won me nine with Jax. <laughs> um, oh my god, we fucking first picked Yorick, dude. Yeah. Holy shit. <laughs> yeah, so that, definitely that was a, a great year, and we ended up getting a reverse sweep by you as well, where I also smurfed, like, uh, that final. Uh, unfortunate uh, things happened, right? And I think we could have won, even though that Ezreal thing happened at the end. Yeah. Um, because I think we should have, like, I, I should have probably carried uh, even one more game. I think yeah. Yeah, and dude. it sucks, you know. Your very first, your very first, like split in NA. You guys are one game away from winning finals. We were, we were both in the finals together, obviously. Yeah. This, so like, how did you feel playing against? I thought Impact was really good, by the way. He was my teammate, so I thought he was really fucking good. But like, yeah. tell me your perspective. How how was it? You had like, you thought you were better than him in the finals. I mean, I don't. The thing is that I don't really think about my enemy top laner much. Like, sure, what he, what champs he plays and stuff. But like, for me, Impact was never a guy who would uh, uh, play like crazy stuff, right? Like, he would always play his comfort. Like, he would always play like Cannon and stuff and Vladimir back then. And I was playing a lot of Aurelia, um, a lot of Akali as well. And those things were really, really broken back then, right? If you remember. Um, mm. So I just picked it, and I felt really comfortable because. I just played those champs so so much more than than he did, right? So it was like easy to play, kind of. But also again, like I got second place again, like after third, the third time in a row. And then <laughs> summer was like, yeah, summer was really bad. I feel like but then we had this whole scenario with uh, swapping out um, Greg and uh, Acadian all the time. Mm -hmm. um, and then I think we ended up just losing in the Summer Gauntlet. We also got reverse sweeped <laughs> against the Dignitas, which really sucked because that would have been my first Worlds um, back then. Uh, and then, yeah, wow. the second year. I did, not, know you got, I, I did not remember you guys got reverse swept. Are you, like, fucking scarred when you get in a series now? Like, when you're up to zero, are you, like, no. sweating? 
Okay, good. Because we also because we also reverse sweep C9 to get into the final of like uh, spring in 2019. And also, like, sure, we lost against you guys, but I think you guys were the better team, you know? Like, we, I don't know if you deserve to lose that specific series, but you guys were for sure better than us. That, that's oh, wow. for sure. And, uh, uh, yeah, I think I think in summer, the best thing uh, in 2020, at least, was obviously that we won the championship, right? Uh, like, well, it was not so great. Yeah. Uh, but I have to say that even though going 0-6, right, it was still a very, very nice experience, and I'm I'm doing my best to be able to go there again and not go 0-6 this time. Yes. You know? It's <laughs> only up from there, far. man. You can only do better yeah. than that. Yanko, so yeah, if you guys sure. make Worlds, are you gonna are you going to get at least one win for BB? I mean, I think so. I mean, the thing is that every time I went to Worlds, I was at least in semifinals. I know no, yeah, you're, groups, you're actually quarters. insane. Like, your, your so career I is fucking it's, insane. Is but... There is also a chance we don't go to Worlds. I mean, I'm going to say, I don't think this yeah. is. But it can happen, right? Depends. Like, maybe Summer Split will be really bad. I think, I mean, we will see how the playoffs goes in Spring. But I'm, I'm super excited to play so. And yeah. it's only two days left as well, by the way. We have Wednesday, right? So we play on Saturday. And the playoffs start on Friday. And from what I checked, NA is not even starting playoffs. This weekend, they still have regular no. season. Yeah, because we're like one week behind you guys. So okay. they're going to have that extra week for practice. I, w I was going to ask you about, this is like where all the G2 fans get super nostalgic. 2019 is like, if I if I look at your entire career, this is probably like your best year ever. And it's also the year with like the G2 roster that everyone loves the most. Sorry, BB. It's like the Wonder Caps Perks Mickey X run where like everyone is just jerking them off. Like, holy fuck, this is like the best E roster that's ever been assembled. And it kind of is. So 2019, you guys are, you guys win MSI and you get, you get to the finals of the world. So you're top two in the world. Like, how was that year for you? Was there any, like, funny-ass stories? Um, or, like, looking back, like, do you get super nostalgic about it? I mean, I think that, like, it's hard to be nostalgic when I'm still a player. I think it makes more sense when I retire to think about the old times. But right now, I'm just trying to beat these old times, if that makes sense. Yeah, yeah. Um, but, yeah, I do remember a lot of draft meetings where we would order, like, shit ton of ice cream in the hotel and just have a draft meeting with ice cream and pizza, like, the one game, one day before the stage games. And normally it would actually work very well. Like we all always had like draft meeting after the draft meeting because we felt like we can we can do like a good job compared to grabs if that makes sense. <laughs> like we would just we would just try extra, you know. And I also felt like everyone was try so try hard to win. That was just so fun to play. Like normally everyone's try hard, but that was like different kind of try hard. But everyone's playing a lot. And mm -hmm. well, Wunder was still playing WoW and memeing about WoW, but he was also putting a lot of effort in, um, especially in scrims. So I felt like that year um, everyone was like peaking a little bit and everyone was super excited to play with each other. And yeah, we, we had a good run, right? Um, unfortunately, before the finals, we actually got burned out a lot. And I feel like we played the worst league of like the whole year. And um, we also got sick, like literally everyone got sick before finals. So it was a bit unlucky. Um, definitely some regrets there. But at the same time, it was still a, it was still a decent run. You know, we won a Messiah. The finals were a bit free, <clears throat> from what I remember. But the semifinals, Dude, pretty exciting. You. Dude, fuck you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Coming into that finals, were you guys really, really confident? Against you? Yeah, yeah. Guys? Yeah, yeah. I mean, we, we played Scream a lot, right? And you yeah. never won. Honestly, so like honestly, coming into that finals, I, I knew that you guys were the better team. Like, I, I knew we can win, right? Like, I, I know that like in a best of five, you can win. Even if you're the worst team. But like after Scream, you guys that year, I, I knew you guys were better. Like, you guys are so fucking good. At MSI. That yeah, was fun. So too. we kind of knew that. I mean, when you won IG, yeah. we knew if we win SKT, we win the whole thing. Like there was no in between, you know? Either we win SKT and we win, <laughs> or we just don't. So when we won SKT in a five game series, I think, I was yeah. like super hype as well. And the first game was, I remember the first game we played Somatatic and we lost the game in like 10 minutes or 12 minutes. Yeah. So that was like insane stomp. But then we kind of clinched back. And then, yeah, I mean, the day after when we played you guys, oh my goodness, like, yeah. oh, dude, it was fucked. It was fucked. It was a really good year for you as well, right? You did beat IG and you went to MSI finals. So technically, it was still good. It yeah, was yeah. Just... That, that was one of my best years ever. Even at Worlds, I thought I was playing really well. But you guys made it to the final. It's not, this isn't about me. This is about you. So at Worlds, you, you guys went, you guys made finals. I actually don't really remember much, except that that was the year that IG won, right? So you guys must have... Uh, in 2019? Yeah, you guys must have lost to IG in the finals. I straight up don't even remember the finals, but like... 
How did you feel it about it? It was FPX. In 2019, we oh, lost it was FPX. FPX. I'm trolling, I'm trolling. Uh, how we lost, we enemy team pick Lee in three games, and Lee was smurfing three games. But it was also like the year where it was really hard to draft around, uh, against FPX because their mid lane would play Nautilus mid and Rumble mid. Yeah. And he would play Ked in some matchups if you would play like the Rumble. And then he would also play, like basically when they had Lee Sin, they had so many like cheesy mid laners with it. And we didn't really play Kiana much because our Kiana was very unsuccessful in like the group stage. And they would flex the Kiana, but we didn't really want to flex the Kiana. So, yeah. uh, because if, when we flex the Kiana, they would be Grumble mid into it. So it was just like many things that was just not going right. And I think the only hope we had was actually picking Olaf into Lee Sin, but we never did that. And I kind of blame myself for it because FPX would always level one invade you. And that was like a big flip because they would invade you even when they would lose, like technically as the three champions of champions. And we would pick all of the series. That was like the series for me to carry in a way because our Olaf was actually working really, really well against everything they played. Because Olaf was like, naturally, Olaf is good against Nautilus mid. It's also like, it used to be better against Lee Sin. Like maybe not the best, but if you get fed, you just get fed, right? It doesn't matter. So I felt like Olaf was like the champion, but we never picked it. And everyone from my teammates, in a way, remembers that we didn't pick Olaf as well because they would always ban it for five and we just never picked it in the first three. And we should have. I think that that could have saved the series. I'm not sure it would give Dude, us two wins. You have like a fucking obsession with draft. Do you guys just have like seven hour draft meetings right now, by the way? Like, is this, is Yekos just like talking about draft perma the entire week? No. I think the, I think the guys who talk most about draft is, it is Yankos and I think it's Targamas. Oh, If wow. I would say. And then we don't, we don't actually have like a real big draft meeting, which I actually. Yeah. I, I think right now it's working better in, than, in, than, than we had in the past. I agree with Bibi. But I also think that draft is the most important thing in league. Like, I don't think you have to be the better team. I think you just need a better draft. And it's one. That's it's true. One. That's actually true. Even though it's so boring, it's actually 100% true. Like, a better team is usually the one that drafts better. And I watch this, you guys' this, games. This, Half the times you guys draft is unplayable. Happens. Yes, I, I, I agree. I agree that some of the games we even lost this year, the draft was, like, not optimal. And I also want to add that that's why you need five players who can play every champion league. Because if you have five players that cannot play every champion league, the draft is not possible. And in 2019, we had five players that could play every champion in the league for most of the year at least. Then we got like, you know, a bit shaky during Worlds maybe. But like almost the whole year we had like a cheese picks and a piece that we could play. So yeah. it was unplayable draft for enemy team. Like even during like the Team Liquid versus G2 MSI, I remember we had Irelia mid against Sejuani Syndra and you know I really just got like one magic res item and it was like unplayable for you guys so I'm just saying that like I think draft is so important it's so important and it's that's why it's so important to have players that play things I see I see that's true I that's, agree that, I, that's that's a fair way to think about it I feel like your your obsession with draft is actually like more than I've seen any NA player in my entire life like even Bjergsen who is like super super anal about draft like he's like so fucking dialed into draft permanently I'm n I've never seen him be passionate dude you should be a coach legit like after no I mean, you're, get, you're getting all, you're getting 26 that's man that's not paid well you don't but have that much time well. I just prefer to be a streamer I just prefer to be a streamer okay okay coach is boring no isn't it boring like you don't even play you just watch it's so boring it sounds boring yeah I agree yeah I um, I'm g I'm gonna ask you BB about um, about the the next year after 2021. But I, I want to ask really fast about uh, so you have this like dream roster with with G2. It's like the it's like the G2 roster that is like the most successful, the most the most popular so far. And so where did it all go wrong? You guys played 2020, and at the end of 2020, um, I think this is the year where Perks does a, a role swap. Um, no, wait, sorry. He does roll swap to AD carry in 2019. And this is the one where there's like more flipping back and forth and you guys only make it to semis. And then the roster is like, it's like never the same afterwards. Right. So what, what happened? Like what happened to the team? Wait, are you still asking me right now? Yeah. Yeah. Like what happened oh, okay. to that G2 roster? Um, I mean, 2020, we made it to Worlds and we made semis, right? We didn't actually, okay. So we did make it to MSI, but there was no MSI that year. Mm-hmm. Uh, because of COVID. And then during Worlds, we lost to the champions, like always. <clears throat> um, and we went 3-1. Sorry, 1-3 in semis. And then we split apart. I think it was mostly because Perks also wanted to play mid lane. But Park, P Caps also wanted to play mid lane. Like, the thing is, as much as Perks was, I think, very, very good on AD carry, and he had, like, a really good game sense, 
he didn't enjoy the role like you could see it mm-hmm. unlike he enjoyed mid and you know when both great both are great players then i think Paris just decided to like kind of step down um and he you know joined a different team being cloud nine that year and yeah well we picked up reckless right and then we just tried our hardest and it didn't work so i wouldn't say that like yeah i mean i just think that last year we probably i feel like we gave it our all especially in summer split but we were just not working well as a team um and i'm happy in a way that right now everyone found a new home because i feel like everyone found the fire in their soul again to actually try to win and perform good and everyone has like a little bit different teammates a little bit fresh teammates so it just makes everything different right it just feels like so many things are refreshed and you have new faces around you and you can be more honest again with criticism because maybe at some point you get too close to each other when you play for so long together like i just think changing teams or players at some point it just naturally has to happen mm-hmm. or maybe you have too much trust you know i don't think there's ever a team that stayed together for like more than two years and was like successful for more than two years maybe there was one i don't actually know but i'm just flipping to say that it was there was <laughs> even yeah. at px i think um they won worlds and then they went like and then they didn't go to worlds next year and i think i mean skt with like faker would be the closest to it but even that the, they were changing players and I think that uh, that, that one uh, being also very close to actually have the same, almost the same roster. I mean, the thing is that they won Worlds and then the next year they didn't, but they were close with the same players, but they still didn't. And then they split up. So, yeah. Yeah. I I mean, I think, I think when you do, sometimes you just need a roster shakeup for sure. But I mean, that one was probably one of the most, like, that was one of the most crazy. Honestly, when you guys do it, because you guys are the most, G2 is like the, top two most popular team in europe up, up there up there with Fnatic. it's like people always want to know why um that's a year 2021 where bb you fucking you went to shulka and i think your team was horrible as far as i remember i remember watching your games and it was like you're just elo held but i was really happy because you're like you're actually doing well on a really really bad team so it made you look really really good um yeah, and that kind of makes people believe he's good, and then they pick <laughs> him up to, to their teams, and then, yeah. Dude, BB's insane. You're probably not ganking top enough. Nidalee Renekton, Actually, bro. That's the Nidalee Renekton <laughs> is, is BB special. You have to play it. <clears throat> yeah. But then that, you have Jacob on Nidalee. Actually, ah. as, much, as much as I hate Nidalee as a champion, yeah. I think Renekton Nidalee combo is actually really OP. <laughs> if it's ever meta, you know. <laughs> But yeah, that year, was the world. Size, so we just have to make it there. That year was definitely uh, a very, very different kind of year that I've been having for the last couple of years, right? Since I think since the Royal Bandits teams, I feel like I had always really, really strong teams, really, really strong members. Uh, and then in Schalke, yeah, it was uh, maybe a weaker team. I didn't think at the time we were like turbo like bad or anything. I did have hope, like I'm, I'm, you know me, I'm always optimistic, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, as a, like, that's just who I am. Um, and I think uh, the main reason why I wanted to join was one was uh, Abedaga, obviously, because I did play with him and I, I thought he was good and I wanted to play with him. Mm-hmm. Um, also, it was Dylan Falco. Those were like the two biggest factors, I would, I would say. Mm-hmm. Um, and in spring, I think we were not a top four team, uh, but we managed to go top top four which is in my opinion was a success right like all also for the organization it was a success because it was i think the first time ever they made playoffs in springs in spring split um and also we almost we almost reversed 3 g2 uh in that playoffs uh oh, i remember Darius. that holy um, sh- which at that time people consider a good team but you know yeah we and, uh, no bb <laughs> you're actually yeah. so good that year i remember these games actually Cause like sometimes like I don't know, just like me and speaker or something would just like fucking be randomly hanging out and like watching your guys' game. It was yeah, you were so good that year. I mean, you probably <laughs> still are. I don't I don't actually watch much LEC. I'm gonna be honest, but I'm sure you're still really good. It's just that year was like, you're crazy. Yeah, and I think uh, in in summer we decided to not play with uh, Gilius because we had to pick up a pick up a rookie mid, which was nuclear end, and we thought that uh, someone who 
like someone like Kirei, which happened to be not so great. Um, <laughs> uh, it's like I, I, don't, I don't even think we should have been tenth place. Like maybe we shouldn't have been doing very good, but I think tenth place was definitely not the level that we were at. Yeah. And uh, it's it's crazy to me that I was, I was never gonna be a tenth place on a tenth place team, right? Uh, but it, it did happen, and I think I did take the most good things out of it. Um, but it was definitely like one of the hardest and most stressful splits I've ever been to, because obviously I never would like to be tenth place, right? Uh, is it is it comparable oh. to like our world's experience, where just like every single day it's like you're so stressed out before the scrim start, like it's just like you can I mean, feel the tension we... before practice even starts, and you just know that a, a day where you get one single win in scrims is gonna it's gonna be a good day. Just just one just one win, please. I mean. That, that you know it's actually really really ironic because in in spring we never managed to beat either g2 i think it was mad lions it was Fnatic. never ever in scrims we got more than three wins against them and especially not against g2 that that year we only had like max one win it's either mm -hmm. zero five or one four one mm -hmm. uh, but in in summer we were actually having really really good win rates uh like it was a 70 percent win rate for for that roster and i was like them are we actually like are we actually just gonna smurf the whole league or what you know and then we go in and then the first game was like a complete disaster the game was lost in level one because talia uh like we died with the jungle uh, and we had to use flash and then we went for cheese king and then we died again and then the whole game was just lost um and then from there at that point on everything went downhill and the team was like slowly falling apart people started not doing as much as many things together um and uh yeah like it was like just another good experience and i i wish for that not to happen ever again in any team that i go to because it was just very stressful time uh, bro god gilly is saying you guys were beating g2 in scrims he's calling you out right now i mean i think we were in the beginning and then later on obviously it went back to like being really really bad right uh, but yeah. yeah i mean after after that split though like it's summer i did have a lot of offers and obviously G2 was uh, the most uh, promising to me. Um, mm. <clears throat> Jungle or <clears throat> Jungle. <clears throat> yeah, I, mean, I definitely did, did want to play with Jankos and Caps, right? Which uh, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm very happy about. I'm also very happy about our ball in. I think uh, they fit in very well. And uh, I am having a lot of fun. Um, I think it's actually a very, very great experience. And I do believe that we're going to win the split. Yeah. Um, it was kind of similar to, like, I don't know if you remember, but uh, when you joined uh, TSM and you said we're going to win for sure. We're going right? to win for sure. And I was like, okay, this, this guy is actually speaking big, you know. Uh, but I have, like, the similar feeling. Even though, sure, our, our, like, some of our games in Split were not, like, really great, but I do feel like we have the best team, if that makes sense. And... Hopefully we can show it right in, in playoffs. Yeah. If not, that would suck. Uh, but then we wouldn't deserve to win anyways. But I do believe that we we should be winning. Yeah. Yankos, what was it like? Like, okay, this is sorry. We're gonna have to backtrack to before BB joined the team because this is this is the 2021. This is season 11 still. What was it like playing with Reckless? And why is it reported that you said it's either a you or Reckless situation at the end of the year? Um, I mean, I think that this is like mostly rumors with the me and Reckless, but I do have to say that me and him didn't have the same view on the game. Um, and I feel like we just didn't find a lot of success with that roster. So what do you guys, what, what do you guys read? What do you mean you have different view on the game? Like, like explain that. Like he just wants you to gank bot lane all the time or what? No, no, no. I, I think it was just that. Hmm. How do I like say it in a nice way? That's <laughs> Just call him dog shit, bro. Just but basically, say it. I would say that like he, he's like idea of being the best team and the best player would be different than mine. Like I would be, I, I felt like I would be more of a team player, and he would be more of a like not really a team player and i know that it may not reflect on what is happening in game but at least outside of the game that's how it felt like to me and that's i think how it felt like to the rest of the team as well um 
he wouldn't like hang out with us much during the season as well, right? Like he was living in a hotel back then, so he would just kind of wait. Why, why is he living in a hotel? I don't. I think he wants to recreate the feeling from Worlds. You know, at Worlds when you live in a hotel and you go back home wait. whenever you want and stuff. But yeah, basically, like you still play a lot, right? Like you still play a lot of solo queue, and I would like let's say go to stream, and then by the time that I would be done streaming, normally we would just hang out as a team because I would like try and gather everyone to like do things with me. Yeah. But then he would always be gone because I've heard about that. Like he's not he really like the team gone, bonding you know? kind of guy. Yeah. So I I just think that like it went against what I was taught was successful in 2019 and 20. And I think that change is good. And of course, there's many ways of winning, but also in game wise, at least it felt like him and Mickey didn't really go that great together. And mm -hmm. um, I also think that there were like some champions that we just didn't want to play or couldn't play, you know? Yeah. Like yeah. Year. So I, I felt like it was just um, different, you know, having like having Reckless in the team and Hampers in the team was just like way, way different. Um, and we still try the hardest and I still think that he is the type of a guy who really really wants to win like he was I'm sure he was trying his hardest I just feel like we didn't make it that year you know because we just didn't fit so well as just five players and that happens you know you can have good players that are just not meant to play together and that's 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 what it is yeah that's all good uh dude you can't just drop the fact that he was living in a hotel during the split and just like not elaborate what the have you guys ever heard of anything like that in your life why is he living in a hotel i mean i think some people are doing that like some players are actually doing that um to recreate just, just the feeling of like, worlds no not i don't think that's their reasoning uh just some people are doing it just because it's like easier to find a place to stay you know in in, in berlin okay um, like I don't, I don't like I don't know if everyone has the same reasoning as it's it's like, actually cheaper to 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 fucking live in a hotel and pay the the daily rate of a hotel than to just like find. Uh, okay, let, let me just. Uh, I think living in a hotel is not much different from living in an apartment. I think it's exactly the same because in the end you just leave the gaming house and you don't hang out with like the team. Yeah. Unless you do it, unless you leave very late or you make days to to make time, I think it's it's different. In summer split, we tried to like fix it and we had a lot of team activities and team bond team bonding like exp not experiences but like situations mm -hmm. that were forced on us because we just felt like we needed it and i feel like that made the team better but yeah i don't see any difference between living in a hotel and an apartment it's just that i think it was like during covid so hotels were cheaper because no one would actually in the hotel because no one was traveling so it just maybe made sense but i also heard oh, that he was okay. doing it in the past but i actually don't care that he was doing living in a hotel i just think it's more about um, again like just doing things together and especially when things are like not working out i feel like um, I just remember like when we, sometimes when we would go to draft meetings, it was like we had a lot of ideas on how we want to play, especially like in Springs with playoffs. We had like this idea that we really want to play like Jinx and Volibear, like kind of Mad Lions, how they won the, um, how they kind of won the, the, the whole playoffs mm -hmm. playing that. But then he had like a different idea in mind. Mm -hmm. um, and I feel like his idea made sense because... I mean, he. I, I think he really likes to be Wixard player. Like my, my read on Reckless after like the whole year is that he really likes to be Wixard player and he actually likes to just have no resources and he just likes to play his game because he's good at CSing and he will just never go behind in farm. Oh, perfect, But I don't man. think he's the type of a player to want resources and to like put the game on his back. Like oh, wow. anymore at least. Like maybe in the past it was that kind of player, but I feel like at least like my experience with him in last year was that he would prefer to be the weak side player. All right, put him on a team with BB. That'll be perfect. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that would make sense, right? But I think Wunder that year also really liked to be weak side. So the problem is we had what like really fuck? good weak sides. <laughs> like we had fuck? really, really good weak sides that year. But I've never heard really of this problem strong. in my life. <laughs> like our strong side was Caps, you know? And that made sense, but because, you know, mid lane also makes sense to be the strong side, right? Yeah. Um, And I think that's kind of like... The, the problem is that not like, okay, so to me, you need to be adaptive because to me, you should always play what is good for, like what is good in the meta. Because in the meta, like if something is good, it's just OP. Like right now, for example, or like the whole spring split, it was Aphelios, Jinx meta, and bo both champs are broken, so you have to play them, right? Yeah. So in this meta, you don't play to mid, you play to bot because if Aphelios or Jinx is ahead, they just 1v9. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you can find your way of winning. And I, I remember like, you know, you can ask yourself a question like, what is the best way to win for our team? Is it playing to mid or is it playing to ball, right? And it is fair that maybe the answer will be, okay, we have caps. Maybe we should play to mid, right? He's a great player. He may 1v9. Mm -hmm. But not in every meta, that's correct. And yeah. in 2019-20, we never asked question, you know, who should we play to Wunder because he's our best player? Or should we play to Jan because he's our best player? We you can play ask, everywhere. What's the best way of winning? The best yeah. way of winning is playing mid because that's the meta. Because let's say Sai and Akali are op uh, really OP during MSI. So our soul lanes have to carry. And then the rig world is different. And our bowling has to carry. But we, we didn't carry. We just played whatever is just best. And I feel like in 2021, our issue was that we couldn't do that anymore. Like we couldn't actually play what's the best in the meta. We just yeah, had yeah, to you're just stuck. play what's the best for us, you know? And what was the best for us was not in the meta. And yeah, well. Yeah, that makes sense. I think I think that's pretty common. Like I think like certain teams, the teams that like feel like they're like they don't deserve their ranking in your in your league or whatever, like the ones who like win a bunch of regular season splits, it's like the meta was good for them for like five weeks and then now it's shit for them come playoffs because like something changed and like they can still only play that one way. So I think that totally that happens to like a lot of teams. And I'm yeah, I'm surprised that it happened to you guys. Cause like Reckless is considered one of the GOATs. I mean I, I think I still think he should be on an LEC team. That's not really that controversial. I, I think it's crazy he didn't find a team. Um, but I yeah, guess it is what I mean, it is. I think that, like, it's, uh, like, yeah, I mean, maybe, right? I mean, I think he's for sure a good player. Um, and I think he's working very hard. Yeah. That's what I think. And I, I maybe I should stop at that because I'll have a lot of... <laughs> I mean, a lot of, like, I mean, like, if I say anything... I will have some, like, already yeah, so many it's people gonna get me, It's going to eclipse. So I, I feel like it's just a bad idea to continue. But, I mean, there are some things behind the scenes that are not talking about, right? And, I, yeah, I mean, maybe it makes sense, maybe it doesn't. I think I think from from fan perspective, at least, I think he he's a good player, you know? And I think he has been proving it over, like, many, many years. And as much as, yeah, maybe he couldn't play Jinx that year, or maybe he just didn't feel like Jinx was good for our team. And that also makes sense. So, like I said, I think he always does everything he can do to win. Um even if maybe my opinion, for example, in that matter was just different than his, he was still, I, I know he was putting his best effort to win as well. So, yeah, that's a uh, nice pure answer, that's, man. That's something I can, I can actually. <laughs> no, I mean, it's true though. Like, it's actually just true, you know? I, that, that's what I mean. In summer split, everyone was doing the best. Everyone was doing like everything they could to win, but we were just not good enough, you know? Like, there was just, it was, we just were not a good team, but everyone yeah. was trying. Yeah. Would you guys ever come to NA? Like, like, would you come back to it, to it, BB, or like Yankus? Would you come for the first time and just like? I don't know because I'm 27 this year, so I don't know mm -hmm. if there's any NA teams who would hire like an old man. But I I feel like Wait, my you're, job you're trolling, is, right? You you guys would I, be I, instantly picked up by any NA team, like straight up. Yeah, but I I feel like, yeah, but the pro is like who wants to join CLG? You know what I mean? Like okay, yeah, sure, maybe like maybe if you join Team Liquid, like can some people, it makes sense because they are a good team. But like, yeah. who wants to join CLG? I mean, like, no offense, CLG. Uh, I'm yeah, just trying yeah. to make a point. <laughs> no, I agree. So, I agree. So, so, I think that my role, at least in the team, is not necessarily as one behind anymore. I think I just bring a lot of experience, a lot of like voice in the team, and how to like play the game and how to like kind of lead the team in a way. But I also think I'm pretty good. Actually, I'm so fucking good. Actually, I, I bring everything. I'm just so insane. Actually, holy shit, I'm so insane. <laughs> but yeah. Anyway, uh, enough about me, BB. What do you think? Uh, I mean, I would maybe go for vacation. Uh, it depends on how big the, the 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 opportunity is. But back then, as when I was a rookie, the opportunity was pretty big. Yeah. Right. Uh, but now I think I have kind of proven myself. And unless I see a way of actually being better there, mm -hmm. uh, then then I would maybe take it. But as of right now, uh, I just feel like EU is better place for me to be a better player than I'm gonna do that you know even if it means that i will earn a little bit less maybe I, in the end i think it's matters more to me at least that uh, i i win you know because all like again like i've been second place so many times and Yankos actually he he did taste the uh, victory a lot uh, which is why i also wanted to play with him right because i want to learn things that maybe i don't know yet um so definitely do want to win uh, another one with Yankos. Uh, but this time with me instead, instead of Wanda. Uh, yeah. Hopefully I can. Uh, <laughs> hopefully we can we can do that together. That would definitely be a very very big accomplishment because that would also be my first title in EU, right? 
Yeah. Uh, so. Not for sure. Actually, I, I, I really want to say something. But I fucking forgot. You're an old man, bro. Really oh, okay, okay. About the NA thingy. By the way, I don't think... Okay, so I, I heard this thought process. I don't remember who told me, but I heard this thought process, okay? So imagine you are in Europe or NA. Okay. But you accept that you cannot win worlds because yeah. Asia is too strong. Okay, yeah. You can either get paid in a name more like way more it's yeah. just a fact yeah and you can actually like save for your retirement and you can also enjoy life more yeah or you can be stressful try hard in europe but the result is quite the same sure you are a bit better region sure maybe in the end you will be uh a, a bit better at worse maybe we'll yeah. make it to quarters but let's say you don't win worse anyway you don't win MSI anyway what's the point but i think for a lot of people if when you for europe it's just the pride of actually being the best and, and you know, having the shot at, at winning. And I feel like when you go to NA, you actually accept you are just not going to win Worlds. That's how I feel for yeah. now. Maybe Team Liquid is a bit different now because they actually have five imports as their core. <laughs> uh, they managed to, you know, get so many green cards. They can actually fit five non-NA non players. Non yeah, five non-NA players. Yeah, that's our best team. Um, <laughs> so I, I feel like it, it just hardly, like, depends how you look at it. And I think many of us actually really want to win, so we don't go to NA. But if you have a choice bet between being, let's say, in Team Liquid, the best team in NA, and k winning two splits in a row in NA, and then going to Worlds and still doing okay, maybe making two quarters and then losing, or you can be in Europe and you can be like top three, not winning a single split, but you are top three and yeah. making two Worlds and like, yeah, again, maybe making our two quarters. I mean, like, it's just better to go to NA, no? Like, you still win the split twice. So you're yeah. still the champion. And they people still like you, even though, I mean, maybe they are delusional. Maybe they think you can do well, but they <laughs> you can't. You know that, but they don't. So they just pray. And yeah. then, you know, you go to Worlds, you still do kind of same as you. Uh, maybe G2. Like, I, I think Europe overall, like, of course, had way better performances uh, than, than NA at Worlds. But it's still, like, somewhat similar because we never won, you know, and so so didn't win NA. And then it's just, you know, it's, it's quite the same. So I feel like it just depends on the perspective, how you want to look at it. And... I think it's completely fair to go to NA and, and be in the best team uh, if you can and, yeah. uh, you know, get paid shit on more and actually like one year in NA can be like three, four years in Europe when it comes to salary. So I feel like, yeah, it just depends what people really prioritize in their lives. You know? But but like, like that perspective about um, like the, the end result is that you make it to Worlds, but like imagine you're Summit or Berserker and like these guys, they came to NA and they're curb summing everyone. They're literally like the best top laner and the best AD carry here. Maybe you could argue Han Sam is as good as Berserker, but that's not the point. They're like these guys are on shit tier teams in Korea or like Berserker is like the trainee for T1, right? So he's probably going to go on like a bottom three team if he, if he does get a spot. And like when they come to NA, they have like a 90% chance of making worlds and they're probably going to get a fucking huge pay increase by coming to NA. So it just feels and like everyone loves them because they're really good, right? Yeah. In Korea, that would be just average. They would just be the okay. Insane. okay. But uh, also so, you, you know, can give the argument that like, for example, Inspire was MVP and yeah. he's not doing so hot, you know? Yeah. And he was considered the best at one point, right? Yeah. Uh, like jungler, right? Like yeah. now that he left, maybe Yankos can regain the spot, but uh, uh, yeah. Um, like you can give that argument, or, or when Crown uh, came to, I think it was Optic, right? People were like, "Oh shit, he's gonna one v nine it," but they, he didn't, right? Like he just choked almost uh, like a lot of games, and uh, you know, like it's not just black and white. Just because he's a uh, he's a Korean import, he's just gonna one v nine in NA, mm -hmm. or like if just because he's an import, um, like there's been splits where like I also didn't play so well, right? Um, like sure, I'm not a Korean, right? But uh, it, I don't think it really changes much if you are just good, right? Mm -hmm. Like for example, if you take Inspired, uh, not doing so hard, you know. And sure, the, I think the downside of going to NA is like either you're gonna one v nine and people are gonna be like, oh my god, he's gonna save the region. Or if a good player goes there and doesn't do so well, be like, if he does bad in a worse region, maybe he wasn't so good in the first place, you know. That's what people are gonna think at least. But, yeah. Uh, that's not often the case, right? But that's also like this. It's not just upsides of going to NA when you are, when you're good or like when you are, yeah. Yeah, but the thing is that you are giving example of Inspire joining Evil Geniuses, which in my opinion is just not the best team. Um, and let's say when you join Cloud9, like Berserker did, I feel like you do have like probably the best NA jungler or one of the best. I think like last year at least was Pick and Blubber being like really good, right? Mm -hmm. I don't know about yeah. like Patch Mid, and I don't know about other players in their team. 
But to me, at least, wait, don't I have Impact Top? I don't even know his called Nine Top Laner. Uh, it's, Summit. Uh, Summit. Summit, yeah. So this guy was also an import, right? So I feel like it's a bit of a flip with that roster because even if Inspire is good, he's not going to like 1v9 games. And I feel like his style in Europe, as the like when he was like called MVP, he was also MVP of the regular season, not of the playoffs. And he was also like, it was meta when the farming was really, really broken and he was really good at that. And I feel like, you know, sometimes, yeah, a guy can be like overrated as well in a way, you know. But I, I think that... Um, I think that it also depends which team you join. Because, yeah, if you join clearly the best team, like uh, Hans Sama and, and Bipo did, then it just couldn't go wrong. You know, People can only love them because they are doing even better. And Bipo was already having a lot of troll picks in LAC, but now he can have like troll picks in NA and win even more games with them. So people can love him even more. So yeah. I think, yeah, it's, you know, like when you just look at the, what you gain, what you lose, uh, sure, maybe you have like, a little bit less chance of winning internationally, but at least in your region, you can be the hero. And uh, you can even get like more fans and like long term, it can just be better for you, you know, like you can become the next double lift and you can just have a lot of people watching you doing interview when you are 30 and watched because you can't play anymore. <laughs> so I'm just saying, you know, it can only be good. like, hopefully I'm the next double lift as well, in a way, you know, like hopefully I can. You're getting there, bro. You're only two years behind. Yeah. Uh, so I'm just saying. BB, have you watched, have you watched Summit play in NA? We talked about it a little bit. Yeah. Do you, I, mean, I do watched you... his last NAR game, at least there was that kind of questionable. But I think he's been, obviously, just, I think he's smurfing as well. As well. Like, do you I don't think know, he'd be like, good in LEC? Nice. I don't know. Like, I didn't watch many games, don't get me wrong, right? I see. But uh, I think, I think he would do good. Like, yeah. uh, also, I think he is, he is playing a lot of champs that are just naturally winning lane. Like, I think he's playing a lot of NAR, a lot of Jace, a lot of Cannon. And it's the same as, like, like, for example, if people pick a lot of... Uh, scaling champs, like for example, I don't know. You can give the, you can give Camille for example. Camille doesn't always get a huge CS lead and stuff like that. And then it may look better or worse for each individual player, right? Yeah. Um, but for sure, that's comfort. Uh, like a lot of Korean players actually love to play stuff like Jason R. And if he's comfortable on it, and um, in NA, for example, I don't think there's a lot of people who actually know how to lane very well and how to trade very well, especially with the jungler around. Um, then he's just gonna take advantage of it, you know. So he just looks very, very good, and I think he he also plays very good, <laughs> right? His lane. So. Yeah. 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 Oh, I was just curious. That makes sense. You wouldn't you wouldn't watch a shit ton of LCS. That shit is useless for you guys. But Yankos, have you watched any of Inspired? Uh, I mean, I. Mm -hmm. It's hard to say. No, not really. Actually, I mean. I do watch NA sometimes with the team, mm -hmm. but I don't particularly watch e Evil Geniuses. Like probably it happened that I did see Inspired game when he was playing, I think, Viego. Like even maybe this weekend and he was like invading a lot. I remember that. But I don't particularly remember like his overall performances. Well, do you think he was, he was good in EU? Yeah, I do think so. I mean, I think he was really good at timing caps, camps. Like he was really good. I, so the thing is when we went to bootcamp to Worlds in 2020, he became like a very big Sofum fanboy. And Sofum is the type of, like, he's kind of a smart player and he is really good at timing camps and playing around them. Yeah. And I feel like that's something he actually, like, stepped up a lot in Europe in 2020 Spring Split, where he would time camps very well and he would play the very fast farming junglers and he would just, like, take advantage of it. And I think this is, like, when his performance is the best. Yeah. And I think in Summer Split, I don't actually remember his performance that well. I'm not sure if he was playing that well or not. Uh, but I suppose he was because I think he was the MVP of summer, not of spring. I actually don't remember he got MVP either. Uh, no, spring was reckless, so he was of the summer. So I don't remember why he got the MVP of the summer. But I do think he was like playing well overall, and his team was playing well for him. So he would mostly gang in his free time, and he would just naturally find the free time by you know farming camp. So he would he would basically get ahead, right? If he can get ahead by farming. Then he would be even more ahead if his ganks are successful and he was good at timing camps and in Vedic as well the priorities. So I think he was for sure playing very well. Um, but I cannot judge his gameplay in NA currently because I feel like he's probably doing the same thing, but I also feel like this thing is just worse now. Just because Jungle will not carry against yeah, I got a lot of you know hyper carry majors, hyper carry AD carries. Yeah. If you let's say pick volleyball and you go behind the farm and he's invading you and then your camps, but if bottom is ahead, it's just not gonna matter in the end. So yeah, I just didn't watch enough to have opinion of, of him right now. I see, I see. That is fair, that is fair. I did not realize you guys were both Polish, by the way, until now. Yeah. Polish junglers, man. We actually have a lot of Polish junglers. We also have self-made. 
who did Evelyn ult you at Worlds and killed you multiple times. Our, 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 our coach literally forgot to ban Evelyn. Like, that was the yeah, most cringe game crazy. I've ever I experienced actually, in my life. I, I did I did tell the story to to one of my teammates, I think. Yeah, I told, you told us, I think, to, I think, to make caps and maybe everyone, actually. Yeah. <laughs> like, I literally, think, we have one though. win condition, which is they can't get Lucian Evelyn, and we gave it to them, and then and our coach is like, oh my god, I forgot. And then all of us just, in the middle of the championship, we go, it's okay, it's okay, we can still win. It's okay, we can still win. But, like, deep down, we <laughs> yeah. know we're like, this is going to be fucked. <laughs> My God. Yeah, um, it was pretty duped. Good times, good times. Well, um, you guys needed to do something after uh, after around this time. This And we were just around 90 we minutes. Just so just like team, 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 team activity. Yeah, no, but yeah. thank you guys for thank you guys for coming. Thanks for sharing all the stories. Um, it was a good time. Is there anyone that you guys want to do a shout out for or say something to the fans? Maybe you can start. No, I actually don't want to say anything to the fans. Okay. Just uh, have Fuck a em. just cheers and have a great day. Yeah, I mean, well kind said. of the same, right? I think we 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 will just try in playoffs, right? We always just try. We can only try, and then we are always pro player is always as good as his latest performance. So hopefully, we are just gonna ask Marvin fanatic. Then everyone will think we are insane. If we just get fucked, then everyone will think we are bad, and that's gonna be fine. That's how our life goes. I love it. I love it. All right. I'll watch your guys' games for sure. All right. Thanks for showing up. Thanks for coming. Peace, guys. Thank you. Peace. Thank you. Peace. See ya.